All right, this is gonna be your installation instructions for your 200 series Land Cruiser skid plates. When you get them, currently all skids are gonna come in individual boxes. So right now, this is the fuel skid. When you start breaking them open, the orientation of them, your skid plates, if you get stage one, you're gonna get these two skid plates. This is your front skid with the three reinforcing ribs and the oil filter drain plug. Your engine skid has the five load bearing mounts with the engine oil drain plug uh, armored door. If you get stage two, it's gonna include this transmission skid with the two reinforcing ribs, the transfer case skid with the transfer case cross member that holds up the back of the skid. That way you don't have any impact load moved to the drivetrain like on the factory setup. And if you get stage three, that'll include the fuel skid. This chip gets that out of the box on how to look when you get it. It will also include three mounting straps, a heat shield, and the skid itself that is so well packed it takes forever to get it out, and that's okay. Pretty easy to identify the fuel, it's the longest one. Also for hardware, we separate all the hardware before it comes in. So you're not gonna have one big bag of hardware and try and figure it out. Everything's gonna have in its own baggie labeled. LC200 front, that's all the fasteners that holds this front skid on. And if it goes down the line, you'll have your engine skid hardware bag, your trans, your T case, your cross member, and your fuel skid uh, fastener bag. All right, to begin by installing your 200 series bud built skids, you're gonna need to remove the appropriate skids for your setup. Now we're gonna be doing stage three, so that takes everything off. So if you get something without a fuel skid, don't take the fuel skid off. Um, if you get something without the transmission or transfer case, we'll talk about that as we go in, because um, you have to loosen one, but you don't get rid of it. So only because we just put sliders on this truck, we already had the fuel skid out, but I want to show you guys how it comes out. You're gonna have five bolts, one, two, three, four, and the fifth one is over here. Now, how Toyota made it, you're gonna bring it down, and Chip is gonna push that furthest arm inward a little bit. It's gonna get around the rear prop shaft. Easy killer. <laughs> there you go. And it comes out like that. Then you're gonna to wanna to take these plastic valences off. I'm not much for power tools, but. We'll make this easy for you. Now those plastic valences can come right back in to the uh, setup if you keep your factory bumper. So we'll show you how those go back in afterwards. tight I'll just take the 3 h drive good. don't be surprised if this side's really tight because um, this is the side that has to come out 
for engine oil changes. So if you have um, a service center, you know, a dealership do it, they probably wrenched it down pretty hard. Good hit. That's why I need skid plates. Go ahead and take the center support out. and the plastic engine cover. Now you're also gonna to wanna to loosen these front diff uh, frame mount retainer or um, protectors. It's gonna be on a 14 millimeter. And this is only torqued down to 43 foot-pounds, so that kind of shows you how rust is starting to take over. That's how they should feel like. I'm going to need a breaker on that one. And that just comes kind of forward. All right, so this area is now clear. Also a good time to get any uh, debris you got out of here. When you're going off-road, you really want to make sure that you um, keep this cooling system clear. This is part of the reason why we don't put, um, we don't shoot our logo through the front skid because you'll just fill your, um, your cooling system with grass seeds. There you go. Now, if you're doing stage two, you're gonna keep this, but you'll still need to loosen this up and honestly, just get it out of the way for right now. Um, but if you're doing, I'm sorry, if you're doing stage one, you'll keep this. If you're doing stage two, this is all coming out. So you can just get rid of it. And here's a fun design element, is that the AC condenser dumps it fluid it's water through that thing that's why those rust out like crazy so uh i'm glad we're getting rid of that you got a three-eighths drive chip 
All right, for your transfer case, you're gonna take this, um, this cage off. I really won't call it a skid plate. Um, so first thing is you need to take the harmonic balancer off. Now, you saw how easy that was. These bolts here are, um, they're only torqued to nine foot pounds, nine. We've had quite a few, um, quite a few 200s come through here and between just routine maintenance done at um, service centers or um, some competitor skids have had some missed labeled information guys crank down on um, on these bolts and this is cast aluminum it's not that strong it doesn't take impacts well at all and these just break off so it needs to come out it's going right back in but it needs to come out to get this cage off and that's why they break it a lot because the cage has to come off to do routine maintenance. There's a lot of little uh, bolts on this transfer case. You just work your way through them. Now, if you're like me, I like to put them back in. That way I don't fill the, uh, the holes with mud. There's a shield that needs to come off first. And that's what I'm taking off at this moment right here and you can not undo that one you can just undo this one and take the uh, right angle bracket off with it Now you have this grounding strap wire, pretty easy. There's a tab, hopefully you can kind of see that. Tab that you just pull forward with your finger, it lifts right off, right there. Nothing, nothing crazy, you don't have to do anything much. Now we'll actually just leave that there because it's a grounding strap. We have a lot of experience with these, they'll be okay. If it really bothers you, you can always just loosely hold it up with a zip tie. Don't zip tie to it, to this AC line, Just you like you can hold it up right there on my 200 i just keep it dangling because it's a grounding strap and it's designed for that chip can you get me a 12 mil with a three inch extension on a three eighths drive. Thank you. that 3 8 drive. Again. 
What I'm getting to is right here. And the cage just comes out of the way. Again, this is where we like to put all these back in. Got an anti-seize one? And we're big fans of anti-seize because um, we hate seize, we're anti-seize. And we're not gonna torque these down just yet, or at all. Just snug them up. It's cast aluminum. Just a little bit. You don't want to crank down on this stuff. This component is really beautiful for what it is. Um, the inside of it's very precision to hold the drivetrain components. It dissipates heat really well. It's generally lightweight, but impact wise, it is, it, it just can't handle much. That's why we've seen We've seen a few cracked cases. That's why we're really against mounting skid plates to this component. It's just, it's just not up to the task. Again, I'm getting it to where it seats and I'm just going, that's it. I'm going to keep putting in the rest of these, but I'm going to remount the harmonic balancer. Again, that's to nine foot pounds, nine, not 90. This would probably crack at about maybe 20 or so. Remember this little notch, it used to be here. That makes, that makes sense. I've seen a couple of these come in the shop and from some service center, they put it on backwards and it's, it's not a dampener anymore because the, uh, the, um, the mounts just don't have the clearance for it. So it ends up being hard mounted. Cause there's rubber in there. What's the vibration? dissipate also this is a good moment to talk about torque wrenches if you have yourself like a um, sub $300 torque wrench um, don't use it on anything below 50 foot pounds. It's, it's just not accurate. Um, just do it by hand. All right, now you got all your mount or your uh, fasteners back in your transfer case. And again, you don't have to put them back in. We just like to keep some mud out of it. You do need to take this heat shield off. I've already loosened it up. Really, it was already off of here for sliders. But this is gonna come off. It will go back in. But we will modify it ever so slightly. This is where we're going next. So this is going to be where we install our um, transfer case cross member. So we already have this heat shield out. Again, it's going back in, but we'll get that out. Over here, I already popped these loose, or maybe I should just say I have superhuman strength. I don't. So you'll loosen these up. Now you're going to reuse these nuts. Let's set them just off to the side. 
So if you go over here to the chip in your hardware bag that says cross, you're gonna get two new bolts, same thread pitch as what came out of there, and six washers. So two washers on the bolt heads. Take one of these out at a time and drop it on the floor. Now, if this ever gets stuck like this, it's perfectly okay. One is usually holding it up. Like you can see how it works. One bolt kind of keeps it from going up too far. One bolt keeps it going from down too far. You can squeeze this, try and push it. You can take a uh, floor jack. You can even just kind of pound it out if you need to. So just take the tension off of it, it'll come out. Go ahead and place our new ones in. Now, this is where you're going to take two washers and double stack each bolt. At this point, you can take whatever you used to jack the cross member up out of the way, out. Take your bud built transfer case cross member and it's going to just hang on there and i like to put the factory nuts back on just as a safety reason and just like the factory we're not putting a washer on this side because it's a flange nut head All right, now on this side, I'm gonna just mock that in place real quick. I'm gonna come back to it. Because this is where, the one thing that we do need to modify is this heat shield. Now we thought about this, do we want people to have to cut something? And really what it came down to was if we didn't trim this little bit out of the bottom, you would have lost a little over two inches of ground clearance right here. So there's a couple different ways you can cut it. I like to use this circle here and coming off of it, I just take these ends off. You don't even need to reuse this hole if you don't want to. It's up to you, personal preference. But you can see how when you put this back up in here, where it wants to be. So this is where we're trying to trim it. And you'll use the cross member itself as the template. All right, so I made the modification to the um, heat shield. As you see, that was the original hole. Just cut a V, round it off, put some paint on it. That thing can slide up freely as you see and it, it creates the clearance needed. So, we're, uh, take this uh, cross member back out. Cross member bolt back out. Hey Chip, you mind pushing up on the cross member real quick? And reuse the factory fasteners for the other three. Now we're gonna still keep the heat shield a little loose with this bolt. And we'll come back over here. And so I like to just bump up the uh, cross member and make sure it's fully seated against the frame. You know, trying to lift the vehicle. Just make sure that it's pushed up all the way. 
you see right there. You still have a little bit of movement. That's okay. We just wanted to fully push up. Torque spec for this is going to be 81 foot pounds. Get that snubbed up. And primarily, you'd want to torque from the nut side. We just don't have the clearance. So we'll be torquing from the bullhead side. Like to reposition the jack over here and just push up on it because all we're trying to do is just make it seat fully up against the bottom of the frame rail. And go ahead and snug it all up. Torque spec for eight millimeter bolts is gonna be 21 foot pounds. Again though, um, you'd really need a high end torque wrench to be able to accurately get this low. So, you know, don't worry about trying to over tighten this thing. As you see, 21 is not a lot. So if you feel like you've got a half inch craftsman on there and you're just pulling on it, it's it, you've gone too far and you're gonna damage it. Now while I'm here, I'll just get the heat shield bolted in place. Now you have the cross member bolted in and you have the foundation built. 
it's time to go to the engine skid. So we got Chip up there. Now, this is where you don't want to start with the front skid. Because of how weak this radiator cross member is, we got to put some load back farther. That's why engine skid's going to mount on first. Now, for hardware, again, everything's going to come in its own little baggie. We anti-seized everything already, so please use anti-seize, especially with stainless steel fasteners. Um, so we're going to go with the engine skid first. Now, you're going to get this. You're going to get replacement M10 uh, fasteners. Um, and we use some pretty high-quality American stainless steel fasteners. If you're into it, I kind of am. I like reusing the Toyota fasteners while they're still not rusted. The problem with these things is that they rust out really quick. This is a new truck, so we're gonna reuse those on this point. And you can hold on to these um, when these start to fail. Doesn't matter which one you start with. Just start running them in. Now, if you're uh, not on a lift and you're just laying on your back, I like to just get on my creeper. I lay this whole skid on top of me. I roll under the truck and I just kind of push it up with the leg. Don't be afraid to like reposition this in any which direction. Probably have a little bit of adjustability built into it. Get that three eighths. Gonna tighten anything down, you just let it hang there. Come to the back again, you can shift it around however you need to, run in your button head bolts. This is gonna be with a five millimeter Allen key, and this key will come with the kit. You want to leave a lot of space on this one because we are going to have the skid behind it slide in here. I'll get this out of the way. It's kind of impeding on the adjustability of it. There we go. We call it the waterfall effect because when you're stuck on a big rock, you don't want a bunch of holes all in your skid plates to get caught on. You want to just have the best chance possible for sliding off. That's why the skids go in behind each one in front of it. So back here on the hardware, we're going to move on to the transmission skid. You're going to get three carriage bolts. 
the longest one goes on the passenger side and you're left left with these two the reason why we have these two is because we found somewhere during the years the cali converter gets higher or lower um so having a longer one is easier to put in it just is uh but if it gets too close to the cat we got a shorter one right here for you So it'll slide in the skid. It'll take the weight of the engine skid. Take the longest one, put it right here. It runs straight up. And we will let the floor jack do the work. And it's gonna come out up on the top. You see it up here? Put big flat washer, lock washer, and then a nut. And again, just let it hang. I'm gonna lead off with the middle length one. Right there, you can see on this particular truck, it's probably going to be okay. If you wanted to, you just have some space. You can just go straight to the short one. It's not like you're going to change the strength of it or anything. It's just when you don't have to push up a skid as far, it's, it's a little bit easier. So you see this one has just a little bit hanging out of the top of it. I'm going to go with the middle one on this. All right, now we'll hang the uh, transfer case skid, which I left over here. Should you wanna grab the carriage bolts. Yep. And again, because of how the slotted design works, lock it in, hold it up. Just run a carriage bolt from the bottom up. They're all the same length on this. Washer and a nut. Put a lock washer in there. Put a lock washer in there. Pretty simple. Oh, you want me to do it? No, I can do it. Yeah. Chips are professional also. All right, so now we're going to go to the fuel skid. So start off with your heat shield. And what you will do, take two carriage bolts, two washers, two nuts. And you are going to mount the heat shield right now. So direction of travel. This is the lead of the vehicle. This is the rear of the vehicle. Prop shaft's running right here. 
This is that rear lower control arm mount. So we have a gas tank strap right here. So this cut avoids that. So you place that in there like so. And then just go ahead and put in the center and the rear carriage bolts. Now, this is my technique. Instead of putting the straps on the gas tank and then trying to feed them up in there and having these things flop around on you, I like to mount these first. So, pretty simple, short one. This is where it was mounted. This is the old gas tank strap. Just come right in here and I'll just start getting it positioned. And all I'm gonna do is, I'm feeling for the top, I'm just putting in a few threads, let it dangle. And if you feel like, you know, I mean, we're used to these things, so you can kind of replicate the two mounts with these. But another easy way is by looking up at the top, you have one mount kind of on an angle, and you have the other mount more straight up and down. So right there, shorter of the two mounts, goes to the lead edge. Longer of the two mounts. It goes to the rear edge. Now this can happen sometimes, so I'm glad this happened here. When this fuel skid came out, it was a little boogered up. A little bit of corrosion in there, so we're gonna run a tap through that. If it's an M8, it's gonna be a 1.25 by M8 thread pitch. And now we wait on chip. Two-handle doesn't fit. <laughs> you probably want to have some cutting fluid on here or some PB blaster. And you don't want to fight it, you just want to be able to naturally go with the threads. Good to go. It's loose, but it's up there. And through the power of camera magic, the powder coated stainless steel skid plate is already on the jack. And you're just going to feed it up through here. I like putting these on the inside. I'm going to send it to the rear a little bit. Yeah, pretty far forward. Yeah. Okay. 
we go. You good over there? There um, we are. Definitely good over here. <laughs> yep. In fact, you might need to come down just a hair. Let me get these two in and then I'll come down. I'll set the pitch more flat. All right, so we're going to have two hex heads. They're going to go on the frame rail. Chip's going to start running those in. Carriage bolts. Now you can feed them in from whichever side you want, but since we have flex head tools, I just think it looks better. Even though I have these right here, just you know, bear with me. I like them like this. But you can put it on whichever side you want. Now if you want to go over to Chip's side, you can see he's going to put them in the rear corner. Carriage bolt, a washer, and then a lock washer, and a non locking nut on the back side. Now, Chip's going to put this one side in here while I'm doing it. And I'm going to show you probably the hardest thing to, uh, to get on the whole skid. I know it's gone easy so far. And that's going to be... Can you slide the uh, skid a little bit forward? Mm -hmm. Right there. Okay. So we have this place where we connect these two. Uh, I'll tell you right off the bat, this is not for strength. It's, it's just not. It's just, we like a lot of bolts and everything. If you ordered stage two, this would, wouldn't have a fuel tank to bolt to, so it's not like you need this. But we do want a heat shield here, and we don't like that rattling, and that's really kind of why we do this. So here's how I get it in there, is I take some small little tool, and I come in from the front, and I feed the bolt in this way. That's going to get to be a kind of a tight fit. So I use this little pair of flathead, or this little flathead, to just get it in place. That's how I do it. Again, I'm going to put my hand in from the front here. It allows me to put my finger on the back side and just use this to help you work through it. Once that's in, same as all the others, you've got a washer, a lock washer. Again, I'll put my finger on the back side of it and a nut. And again, so all this has been loose so far. And now we're gonna go through, and you can kind of situate it wherever you want. If you want this forward or backward or however you like it. I personally like to send this more forward. We do have an area right here where you can run in another uh, bolt. We're probably gonna be getting rid of that because that has absolutely nothing to do with strength and um, this doesn't do anything for it. So if you go up to the front, you'll see Chip starting to tighten everything up for torque specs. M10 are 34 foot pounds. Again, this is M8, so 21 foot pounds. For tightening up these five millimeters, you're just going to take the Allen key and get them snug. Same with the carriage bolts. Just gonna put the whatever wrench you have on it, get it snug. Same all the way down. 
don't think that the fasteners are what needs to be don't don't think the fasteners need to be super tight to hold these on once you actually hit something and you're moving back all these ledges and everything we have on the inside that's what keeps it from shifting around so don't think that if you tighten this down really tight it's going to be better when off-road just snug it up if you hear banging it's because the skid plates are loosening up something happened you rattled them too far and tightened them back up we've heard some people put like felt tape or something in here because they said there was rattling no you need to tighten them up more all right so we're just going to button all the fasteners up right now so now you have everything on and tight but for some reason the fuel front skid is not on yet and that's because you can't get to some of the fasteners to tighten them after this is on all right so now that from the engine skid back is on aligned and tightened now it's time to put the front skid on. Now it's gonna come with the oil filter door already attached for shipping, and you can leave it like that, or you can loosen it up, you can take it off. Uh, for this, we'll just leave it on. So you've got these reinforcing ribs that are on the back side. Those also will lock onto the lead edge of the engine skid. So you'll just get them right between it, and it's gonna hold itself there. Go ahead, take your M8s, you just kind of push it up by gripping the radiator cross member. And just leave it kind of loose. So you've got five countersunk bolts. That's going to go... Wow, Chip. Oh, you got that on there for shipping. <laughs> It's going to go along the bottom edge and just move the skid around until you find the receiving threaded portion on the engine skid and just start getting them in there. I'll usually put the first one in and then I connect one for the oil filter door. Again, though these fasteners don't need to be cranked in there because they're not taking any of the engine load or then the impact load the fact that there's a another quarter inch plate on top of this 3 16 plate is where the impact from up here is transferred down to the engine cradle not to this rather weak radiator cross member which is designed to fail in collisions so we want it to still fail in a collision but we also want you to have that strength for when you're off-road just getting it That was gonna look so much slicker Now that's it pulling itself up on the lead edge. Totally fine. Because this is going to self align since these two pieces are built in CAD and laser cut. We know that can just be precision. When we attach things to Toyota frames, Toyota frames are pretty good, but they're not they're not perfect. Trust me. They definitely vary from vehicle to vehicle. But when we attach to our own stuff, we know exactly things are going to be in the right spot every time, all the time. And again, I'm not cranking down on these. I'm just snugging them up. Then come back on. Just tighten up your lead edge bolts. Yeah, they don't need to be tight. These are built with a slip in them. So if you do have an impact, we're just wanting this to 
send that force rearward. So at this point, if you have a factory uh, front bumper and you want to retain plastic valences that go over it, we have a drilled and tapped six millimeter to reuse this piece right here. So I'll modify this and show you, but what we'll do is you can just bolt it on like that if you want. Uh, in here in the shop, I like to just cut here, down, over, and come to this one here, just because our skid offers more ground clearance than the factory one. And I just don't like things that aren't that have a have an attachment point that aren't attached to anything. All right, so now let's say you have a, uh, a modified front bumper like an ARB. Uh, if you come over to my 200. So we build all bud built skin plates off of if they have ARB bumpers. So it's really easy. I undid mine real quick here. So what you would do is you would mount the ARB uh, filler plate here that's going to come with the kit on the bottom of our bud built front skid. And then you'll just attach these, and these are loose right now, like I showed. And so it just puts up into place. You don't need to bend anything. It just it just works. So that's that's really it. Um, we just say that you put the, uh, the little splash shield that comes with these bumpers, you know, lower to the ground than the lead edge of our skid. And then you would do the same thing. You would, you know, after you put in all four of these here, and I'm not going to really waste your time on it because it's it's just brutally easy. So you'll all put you'll put all four in, tighten them up, and come back to the lead edge and tighten up. You know your fasteners on the front and it's gonna fit just fine because this is designed to mount to this piece anyway. The factory skids stick down a little bit, but we have 3 16 and quarter inch materials. So they just mount right up, easy. All right, and then so that pretty much will conclude the uh, install. So the last thing you need is to, so these have already been trimmed up. You can just see how I did it. Nothing crazy. Just follow the edge. You don't have to. Just something I like to do because that point's not going to be there. All right, that concludes the install of the Land Cruiser 200 Series and Lexus LX570 um, skid plate installed. If you have any questions, shoot us an email at tech, T -E -C -H, at budbuilt.com or give us a call at 828-572-1202.